Well, this is the fourth year that you, you has been participating in the G20 as a as an invited guest, and it uh, speaks to both their interest and their actual uh, contribution to a more international and global role uh, in many areas, um, not only in the region, uh, but in general, both in humanitarian and political issues. Climate change has become at the forefront of uh, global discussions in the West. A uh, few years, it's not just climate change, it's also energy issues, energy security, uh, the role of energy and climate-related issues in uh, global economy. UAE has a lot to contribute, uh, not only as a member of OPEC, not uh, not only as a, uh, uh, as a country with the huge resources it has devoted to climate change, uh, climate-related issues, but also as a, a global actor that has become uh, sort of a connector between different regions uh, diplomatically, and that has uh, developed uh, very strong um, productive trade relations and also dialogues with the leaders from around the world. In that capacity, despite being a small country, it has a vital uh, role to play in voicing uh, um, uh, different opinions in drawing uh, discussions as it's doing with COP28. Uh, and it can cont contribute to G20 very substantively uh, because of the many innovative breakthroughs and companies and uh, projects that it is uh, currently involved in with related to climate change topics. Uh, the, the Crown Prince. The recent uh, dramatic announcement at the G20 summit about a mega infrastructure uh, project running all the way from India uh, to Europe through the Middle East is great news for our region. Uh, it's especially ambitious and visionary uh, by being a multi layered project combining not only railway and shipping lines, but also energy pipelines and data cables. Uh, this is the result of uh, a strong global and American leadership in general, uh, but more importantly, of a powerful regional leadership that we witness with the inspiring moves of leaders such as uh, Mohammed bin Salman and uh, Mohammed bin Zayed. Um, such moves further um, push Saudi Arabia and the UAE uh, up the ladder in becoming not only influential powers on the regional level, but also on the global level. Uh, while obviously these leaders have the best interest of their countries in mind, their moves will also serve the best interest of other people and countries in the region. And we can only hope that other regional leaders will uh, follow their example. The economic corridor will allow the regional oil producing countries to more easily diversify their economies and prepare for a, a world without oil for the global good. Uh, it will also lead uh, to the economic prosperity of communities along the corridor's route. While it's easy to understand the economic benefits uh, of the corridor, we can also start building on it as a corridor uh, that will allow for more cultural, touristic, people-to-people -people engagements in the region. We will see more uh, joint regional research, exchange of knowledge, and implementation of uh, new technologies. It will allow us to develop a pluralistic Middle Eastern culture and accelerate the process of Nahda uh, Akhlemiya, regional renaissance. Having such a corridor up and running, we can even imagine how uh, much easier it will be uh, for all of us to show regional responsibility and lend a helping hand to communities in times of need, like after the earthquake of, uh, of Syria and Turkey a few months ago and the one in Morocco less than two days ago. Uh, while the official announcement about the corridor mentioned Saudi Arabia, the UAE, Jordan and, and Israel as the regional countries that will be connected uh, through this project, uh, the project could and should allow other countries and people to thrive on it. We're talking about the Palestinians, Turkey, Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, Egypt and North Africa, countries in the uh, Horn of Africa, other Gulf countries. Uh, no one should be left behind. Uh, this corridor has enough potential to allow all the people in the region to enjoy it. We will now need to see the great leadership that gave birth to the concept of this project uh, show its greatness also in implementing it. Uh, there's certainly a lot to expect, and we will all buckle up and uh, say it tuned.
While meeting the world leaders at the G20 summit in New Delhi, India, President Biden gave a special acknowledgement to His Excellency Mohammed bin Zayed, whereby he attributed the success of gathering this distinguished diplomatic uh, meeting due to his effort. This is a great contribution from the United States to the prestige of uh, Mr. Mohammed bin Zayed and also to the good diplomacy of the United Arab Emirates for the excellent work they are doing to stabilize the world toward better goals for all of humankind. Well, uh, let me just start by saying that uh, today's economic corridor agreement at the G20 summit um, was a historic in nature, and it comes with several significant points to recognize. Uh, one, uh, the simultaneous rise of MBS and MBZ illustrates how well Saudi Arabia and the UAE work together towards the common good of the region and the world. Uh, and two, uh, it, it is clear that the, that the Biden administration has retracted its nonsense, unprecedented threats to Saudi Arabia, uh, a historic ally and a partner for decades. Uh, three, um, Saudi Arabia once again illustrated that it plays effective diplomacy like no other country. Uh, and four, uh, the UAE's soft power coupled with the alliance of Saudi Arabia uh, is going to be the new global policy making norm. Uh, and uh, five, uh, Saudi Arabia under the leadership of MBS without a doubt is emerging as a leading global superpower that can balance and maneuver effectively its relationships with China, USA, Russia, and India. And uh, six, the uh, Saudi Arabia-Israel peace accord uh, coming to light is a given. Uh, seven, the significance uh, of the Suez Canal uh, as we know it is diminishing. And uh, eight, and finally, uh, the world is embarking on a mega economic recovery plan as a result of today's agreement. U.S. President Joe Biden on Saturday thanked UAE President Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed for his key role in securing a milestone rail and ports deal linking the Middle East and South Asia. This is an acknowledgement of how the whole world, and not just the United States, appreciates the key role the Emirates performs to create a smooth course of international relations. I don't think we'd be here without you. These were the words used by President Joe Biden in greeting UAE President Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed. All the leaders gathered in New Delhi at the G20 agreed with President Biden in his display of respect for the leader of the United Arab Emirates. By promoting the rail and ports deal at the G20 summit in India, the United Arab Emirates proves that economics can be safe for the world. The rail and shipping project connecting India with the Middle East and Europe was made official at the G20 summit in New Delhi. It is a vision for the world economy in the 21st century. For sure, it will boost world trade and make global commerce more efficient. I cannot wait to see the beginning of the construction on this massive project. The corridor of railways and roads linking India with Europe through the Arab Gulf is a mega project and will facilitate transportation and logistics among so many countries. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates will be the lead nations to ensure its management and operations are successful. It is crystal clear that the Emirates must be invited to become a permanent member of the G20 summit when it convenes in Brazil in 2024.